Hello and welcome to Too Fast, Too Forever. There's all kinds of family, we chose this one. This is episode 81, Nas Boost 3, the Fast and Furious Minutes 46 through 48. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe Too, and this episode is brought to you by CVS Minute Clinic. Clinics are staffed with nurse practitioners and physician assistants who follow nationally recognized clinical guidelines to diagnose and treat a range of conditions. Especially in a trying time like this, CVS Minute Clinic, get out there, I mean, safely get yourself tested from whatever. I don't know if they're doing COVID testing, but uh, I don't they're, so. they're doing an essential service. Yeah, they are. Well, we are here again. This is our Nothing But Time episode for this week. We are doing three more minutes of the Fast and Furious three minute good by minutes minute again. breakdown. Three good minutes. And we were saying, and I don't know how this keeps happening. I made the observation, you made the observation. Each of these minutes starts and ends in a good place. It's like they constructed this movie by minute, which makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, it's, it's weird when we're watching it minute by minute, but a lot of the times, like, we've had a couple that, like, you know, end in the middle of a, of a sentence or something, of dialogue. But these ones are, like, very well contained. They almost, like, start on a different location and end on a different location, like, every single time. It's crazy. It's crazy. So before we get there, though, we have to do our top of the show stuff. Extracurricular activities. Joe, since we last recorded on Wednesday, four whole days ago, what have you been up to? Nothing. I just finished Love After Lockup, all, like, the rest of the episodes, so... I think there was like 50 or 60 of them that I've finished oh, since quarantine Jesus. started. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it's one of these shows it's like you don't really need to pay attention to, so you can just put it on for five hours sure. at a time. That was it. I'm actually kind of sad about it. Well, you got to watch them again now. Just like Haley no. started this podcast over, you got to watch them again. Pick up things you missed. <laughs> no. There's nothing that you miss in this show. I promise. There's nothing you miss. There's nothing you even gain if you just watch it normally, right? So it's just <laughs> exactly. like... Exactly. Yeah. It's just brain mush. I don't know if we watch any movies or not. Not that I remember off the top of my head. Did I talk about watching Onward? I watched Onward. That was good. Yes. We but didn't yeah, like go into depth, but you said, good movie. Yeah. So that's what I've been up to. Nothing super crazy. So, okay, so we have, a, uh, I hopefully, established a firm risk cadence of Monday night and Thursday night. So here's a quick risk update that no one cares about still, but I did not quite Leroy Jenkins the way I was going to Leroy Jenkins. Okay. But I basically, if you had to Vegas odds now, I went from being overwhelming underdog in the last time to probably slight favorite right now like i'm not gonna i'm like i i'm not in a great position but i have the most armies and i'm in a good position right now good um that's so awesome. i tried a very daring thing separate from what i talked about last time that failed miserably um <laughs> so you know it's it's going well but you know having two risk games or two risk sessions because it's the same game it's gonna be the same game for a long time uh, to look forward to each week is a uh, it's a fun thing to do. Yeah, it sounds fun. So we recorded a episode of Catch Me If You Can or about Catch Me If You Can for Hanks of the Memories mm-hmm. yesterday. I also recorded an episode of High School Slumber Party yesterday with also with Mike um, and Jordan. We did about this Keanu Reeves movie Flying, which we loved. When we did for Keanu Club, and we did cool. for High School Slumber Party. And then yesterday, for the first time since this all started, I saw my parents. I had dinner with my parents outside, socially distanced. It was the first time in like you know almost a month probably that I saw them. So that was good. That's cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Did you guys order food or did somebody cook? So I did a curbside pickup of they were running low on some alcohol that they wanted and then also dinner. So it was in the same strip mall. So I just did the curbside pickup, just honk the horn or actually no, I had to call inside to each place. They just dropped it in the trunk, didn't have to sign anything. It was wonderful. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I really like this part of this uh, lockdown thing. I felt bad about buying movies in a time like this, but also I'm supporting my local Best Buy. There's a deal of the day today. So for some like Marvel and Disney movies and stuff on 4K Steelbook for 10 bucks, I got them Iron Man movies, which I already bought, but I had them in Blu-ray. So I upgraded to 4K for 10 bucks each on a $10 certificate. So I got three for 20 bucks and they did curbside too. So I just opened my trunk they threw it in. It was all good. I was just like, it's it's so seamless and so easy. I wish that we didn't have to invent this kind of stuff, but like people, like businesses are really doing a good job of like staying as productive and whatever as possible while also minimizing interactions. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It's cool um, how much it's working, actually. And I've seen a lot of signs. I don't know if you've seen if you if you how much you drive around, because I haven't really been driving around much, but I guess on Not my much. walks and I just see it on Main Street, like... A lot of places now have new signs up, like open for curbside, open for takeout, open for delivery, use Grubhub, use Seamless, whatever. Like all these new signs that, that were never yeah. open before are now just like popping up everywhere. Like, hey, don't forget about us, basically. Yeah. Which is a bummer, but also, you know, do whatever you got to do to stay in business, stay, you know, stay afloat. Yeah, actually, I was laughing about this with Rachel. Usually we do a lot of cooking. Yep. And actually we do a lot more takeout now. Really? Because we're like... 
yeah, because we're like, okay, like something different, right? And like we get to support somewhere close. So we've been doing a lot more takeout type things oh, than we cool. normally do. Yeah. I feel like I'm probably an extreme version of the opposite. Like I like last night the food that I had from the pizzeria is the first food that I ate that I hadn't made in close to a month. Like, and I'm not, wow. like, making these, like, crazy elaborate dishes. Like, I'm sometimes just heating things up or, like, you know, tacos or chili or whatever. But, like, I had basically been preparing 100% of the food that I ate for three and a half weeks. Like, it's crazy. It's I've never I've never done this before. That's cool, like, man. Yeah, I mean, it kind of sucks when you're cooking for one. I understand. Yeah. You know? Like, no shots or anything, but, like, it does. It's a lot easier when you have, like, two people doing prep, two people eating, stuff like that, so. It's, it's, yeah, it's more work. It's the cleanup. It's the prep. You have, Less like, payoff. there's so much leftover, so, like, you just get tired yep. of eating the same things. Mm-hmm. Just not, in the, in the grand scheme of things, can't really complain, but I'm just, you know, I'm soldiering on. Like, and I I feel like I'm, I'm not letting the food go to waste, because, like, normally if I made chili that serves, like, five meals or whatever, I would, like, throw a meal or two away, because I'm just, I would get tired of it, but now I'm, like... I don't have, like, I can't go out and get a sandwich or whatever. I mean, I could, but I'm not. I am doing my duty and socially distancing by eating my chili again and again and again and again. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Anything else of note that you've done since uh, since last time? No. Fixed the ice no. machine in my fridge. That was it. Oh, very cool. Very, uh, were you using, <laughs> were you tinkering with it while you lied on the, you lied on the floor and watched TV with some screwdrivers on your chest? <laughs> yeah, essentially. It needed to defrost it, and I needed to, like, play in there and reset it and, like, a whole bunch of other, it was just being a pain in the ass. I, like, I fixed gotcha. it before, so. Right. Yeah, there's actually a class action lawsuit against Samsung and their ice makers because Ooh. they all suck. You have a beautiful refrigerator, too. Yeah, I know. It's just, like, the ice maker is, like, the piece of shit part of it, and, like, everybody seems to know that. Like, if you, like, look on YouTube, it's like, how the fuck do I fix this ice maker? It's such a piece of shit. It just gets it just gets jammed and stuff a lot, so. Well, welcome to my world. I have not had an ice maker in my refrigerator because I just have basically, like, imagine, like, just whatever, like, when you think of the word refrigerator, like, that's just what I have. Like, there's nothing fancy about basic, it. There's nothing yeah. bad about it. just, like, it's a refrigerator, and so yeah. I have that. And so, you know, I would like to upgrade, but also... Why? Exactly. Joe, we have a Patreon page in the show, TooFast2Forever.com or Patreon.com slash TooFast2Forever. If you want to support us, support the show, you want to get some exclusive content, some merch, some swag, access to the quiz, the Fast and Furious Minute document, TooFast2Forever.com. Shout out to Cassie Wilson, Jake Freer, Ben Milliman, Nick Burris, Alex Ellen, and Justin Kleinman for supporting us over there at the $5 level or above. Thank, Thank you, you all so very much. Actually, I have not. I usually, lately, I've been prepping... By looking at our reviews before we start the show. I have not looked Ooh. today. I'm assuming there's going to be any more. But let's see here. Go on iTunes. Too fast. Too forever. Still 21 ratings. All five stars. If you want to do a nice thing, go to an Apple Podcast. Leave us a five-star rating. Review. Whatever. I mean, you listen to the show every week. Twice a week now. You know the ask. Please do it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We also have an email address. Family at cageclub.me. And Joe, I think I'm going to change the way that I count the number of emails because I feel like people send like just like they're like oh I forgot oh I forgot I forgot so at least for now we have emails today from three different people okay first up from I mentioned her earlier from Haley subject line possible rant ahead sorry not sorry Haley's been sending us some messages uh some thoughtful looking out for us messages on Facebook as well so thank you Haley for checking in so she says hey Juana oh god I forgot hold on I gotta figure out how she says this uh, she says, getting better may just be the accent. So let's see how she pronounced it. Hold on. It was pronou- pron- phonetically Farno. Still don't feel good about that. Okay. So she says, hey, Farno. Getting better may just be the accent. I can't believe they're holding F9 release date for a whole year. I can understand waiting a few months, but come on. I do believe having something to look forward to helps with keeping people's spirits up. And during a time where everyone is being canceled, it's so disheartening. Everything is being canceled. It's so disheartening. After talking about the delay with my dispatch manager at work, I mentioned the word Fastiverse. And he was just like, what? Where did that come from? (laughs) Well, boy, do I have a podcast for him. Which, strangely enough, this perfect line has been said more than once in the past few weeks. I then proceed to ask a few of my coworkers what film is their favorite. And all three said the first one. Ooh. Ooh. Well, boy, do we have a breakdown, a minute-by-minute breakdown for them. <laughs> she says, after we listened to episode 15 in the beginning, Joe said that him and a co-worker were talking, and they said they, how they could one-up F8. And the idea was that Dom had an evil twin and it would be a Dom against the family in a weird way. Well, I suppose mm-hmm. you were kind of right. We do get Dom's brother, so maybe the writers are listening. I love the idea, and Too Fast, Too Forever was the inspiration for F9. Uh, somebody else had mentioned that. Right? Didn't somebody else write an email right after we... Maybe it was like Justin or Nick 
sent an email in like right after um yes like recently yeah like right after the f9 mm -hmm. trailer came out they were like this is essentially evil twin dom right like yep. i hope that they're listening no we've said it and like i really really want them to just admit that they're listening Please. i was saying like when when you were saying evil dom i was basically thinking bloodshot right like Dom with red eyes and just like kind of, <laughs> yeah. sort of bizarro Dom. I mean, we're getting more of a practical evil twin Dom, but you're right. Like that is what we got. Yeah, I hope so. All right. Now, very important thing. Haley now includes her rankings. Okay. Which I don't remember. No, she's never sent them in before. So here we go. Okay. So she says, I bought Fate of the Furious last night and watched that. So I will now complete my rankings below. So you want me to go top down or bottom up? What are you, what are you more interested in? I like bottom up. Okay. Uh, number nine, Tokyo Drift. She says, sorry, Ooh. that accent just bugs me every time I watch it. It bugs us, too. That's <laughs> that's a good drift? point. <laughs> what do you mean, drift? Donkey Kong. <laughs> number eight, Too Fast, Too Furious. There's not enough family for me in this one. Oh, Too Fast? Okay. I mean, well, we get, like, they become family later, but at the time, no. And we like the extra characters, but I get it. Yeah. Number seven, Fate of the Furious. I actually really enjoyed this one. I don't see it as Dom versus the family. I will update you more on my thoughts when you cover it next, which is okay. sure. awesome. Fair. Number six, Fast and Furious 6. The whole Letty thing upsets me. There is no Dom without Letty. True. Number five, Hobbs and Shaw. I love the banter between Hobbs and Shaw on this one. Cool. Okay, so Hobbs and Shaw is included. Yeah, because yep. there's nine of them, so that makes sense. Number four, Fast and Furious number four. She says the family is back. The stakes are higher. What more do you want? Not a dead Letty. That's for sure. Yeah. That's what that's the more that I want. Yes. Number three, Furious Seven. It makes the water works go every time. Yep. That we can agree with. There's two left, as I'm sure you can do the math. It's the original and fast five. Number two, the original. Pure nostalgia and perfect one liners. So many great one liners, which we'll get to through these minutes. They always crack me up. Which means number one, we begin the redemption tour for Fast Five. Number one, Fast Five, you get a little bit of what you want and didn't know you wanted. I would agree with that. It is a little bit of what you wanted and didn't know you wanted. She says, okay, so now that I have rambled enough and I'm certain this email does not flow like it should, I better get back to work. Speak soon. Stay safe. XO Haley. Thanks for checking in, Haley. We appreciate yeah. it. And thanks for your rankings, as always. Also, I don't think you need to necessarily worry about the flow of an email, because basically <laughs> what I try to do is I just read until what I perceive is the end of a thought and then pause to get Joe's reaction to it. But it yes. uh, doesn't yeah. always work that way. But, you know, I try to break it up anyway, so whatever. Flow's not bad. I think Joey controls it, handles it really well. Uh, then we have three things from Hector. So first up, subject line, past gas. Past gas. He passed gas? We farted. Or just gas in the past? I don't know. Oh, no, I Do think... You know okay, brewery? so here. Who farted? Here we go. He says, hey, my broskies, since I've caught up with your podcast, I can now listen to more podcasts. One podcast that I listen to that's not yours, no hard feelings, is Past Gas. P-A-S-T-G-A-S. Uh, like okay. Gas from the past. Okay. The show talks about the history of events or the history of a person or company. The podcast is another show for the exponentially more popular team of Donut Media, a YouTube channel about all things cars. Yes. Have 3 million subscribers and have a sticker in the recent Need for Speed games. However, your podcast is still one of, if not the best, podcasts. Gotta go. Stay oh. fast. Stay sanitized. Thank you, Hector. Hope you're staying cleansed as well. My buddies like Donut Media too, by the way. That was like, they, they watch all those YouTube videos, so... I think I've heard of Donut Media, but I do not, yeah. I'm not familiar with it. Um, this next email, the subject line is Toyota GT4586. Okay. Um, so here we go. And he says, Sup, Joey's. Do you ever want to know if a Ferrari engine could fit in an 86? Well, now you know. It's owned by Ryan Turek. Turk? Turk? You see these wheels in the front, Joey, of this thing? Oh, I, I looked I looked up, yes. But yeah, I looked you up. You know, that's uh, what we're talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. He says, it sounds crazy. Click it out with a link in the pic. Gotta go. Stay fast. Stay... He has an end. Stay fast. Stay furious. Stay sanitized. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah. And then here is uh, I'm gonna say, there's a, he put a couple. He puts a couple pictures in here too. So let me grab these from the email and I'll send them to you. This is cool. This is actually funny. My dad has been calling me about a Ferrari that has a Corvette engine in it, and he's been telling me all about this. So that's it's this is like the reverse, right? Oh yeah, these look great. They're that's very cool. cool. It's a cool looking car. It's again cool. a weird looking car. But a cool looking car. Why? It just doesn't have a hood on it. No, I, the st I think the stancing looks weird. I don't. I don't know that I'm on board with stancing. Oh, when you look at it like dead on and you see the wheels out like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks kind of. It looks kind of menacing, stanced. I know, right? I, I you have to hit the right level for me, and I'm like, that looks cool. That looks cool. That like, oh god, stop! You know, <laughs> like it just hits this point, and I'm just like, nope. This looks. I think this is like a tasteful thing. Like I'm, I'm it's not tasteful. against it. I just this I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. Yeah. It's like the whole new wave, bro. And then Hector's final email just says, I approve of the compromise of the Minute 39 name change. Okay. 
Thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. We were we kind of split the split down in the middle there. Yep. And then our last two emails are from Nick Burris. And What's up, he, Nick? Uh, doing his thing. So he says that this subject line ends with, say it right, Joey. So I'm going to do my best to do this justice, okay? Okay. Ooh, daddy likey, LOL. <laughs> say it right, Joey. <laughs> what? Why? He says, uh, first talking about airlines, we were talking about airlines, he says, I forgot I can go with Southwest, they're all good, Delta likes to lose bags, but all in all, not too bad, most of my flights with them had military ties, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, cool. I've never had a bag get lost, have you? We were coming back from Indiana, and I had my bag full of beer, expensive beer that we had just got at a beer fest, and I had somehow like kept the good, very expensive beers of the beers in my bag, and we get back and they're just like, nope, your bag just didn't make it. And I was like, well, what are you going to do about this? And they're like, uh, we'll just deliver it to your house. And so, like, yeah, they delivered it to my house. Like, sometime later that night, I woke up in the morning, and at, like, 8 a.m., it was sitting on my porch, which isn't the safest, best thing to do. But no, it arrived. And I was like, that's fair enough. It's the only important thing. Yeah. I mean, like, that was good enough for me, man. So I've, um, it's rare, but I've definitely had a bag not show up. But you've never lost, lost one. You just, you've had a delay on one, basically. I've had a delay on one. My bag, my Victorinox bag has a serial number on it, too. So, like, you can track the bag based on that. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. He says, I'm a fan of Craftsman Tools. They're very good. Not with the snap-on price lifetime guarantee. True. Plus, I can buy them at Lowe's, so even better. Yeah. This is, we buy a lot of Craftsman stuff, too, for that reason. If you break it, you just go back to Lowe's, and you're like, give me a new one. They just give you the new one. It's pretty cool. cool. Yeah. says ADHD seems to be in effect with Jesse. Plus, I was thinking about the few times that he has dialogue and thought his dad was supposed to be getting out of jail sometime. What if he is somehow in the next movies? It's a stretch, but what isn't? He says Dom's dad sort of got him killed. Kind of a revenge plot. Jesse's dad comes back. Not Jesse because Jesse's revenge. dead. Yeah. But they have to call in Jesse's dad? No, no, no. He's saying that, like, what if Jesse's dad gets out of jail, says Dominic Toretto, you killed my son. I don't know. I would imagine Jesse's dad is, like, a meth head. That's what it seems like it would be like he's in jail for. Jesse is the skinny Pete of this universe, though. He is. He definitely is. That's a good point. I can feel like Jesse's dad was, like, manufacturing meth, and that's why he's in jail. Sure. So I don't think... So on that note, I don't think that he has the criminal enterprise slash level to fight Dom at this point in the franchise. Because he can't, like, you know... We're too late in the game. We're too late in the game. Even Walter White at this point, like, can't fight Dom. Like, it's not it's not high enough stakes. <laughs> Like, he's not, like, the conglomerate. Like, he doesn't run the world, essentially, right? right. Like he's Well, he is Coca-Cola. He is Coca-Cola. But, but what does it make same- Dom? Dom's like the bottling plant? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dom is, like, s- like, soda, fountain soda machine, like, manufacturer or something. Okay. Like, something, like, super conglomerate. Or he, like, he makes this, the high fructose corn syrup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's the refinery for high fructose corn syrup. Yep. He like it just too. It's just too high for her. that. Like Walter White is an industry, but you can't you can't go up the supply chain. Yeah, exactly. Um, to answer one of the questions about Dom's RX-7, when they have the parts of the Super, the RX-7's out front, but I think that's the last time you see it because at Race Wars, he seems to ride with somebody else to do the heist. Yeah, but I think he drives it to Race Wars. I don't remember. We'll get there in the minutes. Soon enough. This next point is something that I've been meaning to talk to you because it's coming out soon-ish, and as far as I know, it's not been delayed. He says, I'm excited and wishing, hopefully, that the Fast and Furious Crossroads video game still stays on schedule. I'll be getting it first thing. It should be like another movie in itself. And this is coming out the end of May. I think it's tentatively scheduled to come out like May 31. Okay. It's like an Xbox game, PlayStation game. I don't know how to cover it unless I like, unless either we both buy it or I buy it and stream myself playing it and you watch along or something. We could figure out how to do it. But like, I think if it's canon, if it's like worth playing, it'd be full, it'd be cool to talk about. Yeah. Give it a tester, you know, play like yeah. an hour or two. Tell me if it's good. We can do Xbox game share link or whatever and we'll do something. Yeah, for sure. He says they knew that Vince would come back and they purposely made his chair right across from Brian kind of messing with him. Oh, that's mm. the barbecue. I like that. That's a that's a fun little uh, f you to Vince. Yeah, or like it's normally Vince's seat, so nobody took it, and they didn't give it to Brian. Or maybe Brian took Vince's seat, and that was supposed to be Brian's seat, and everybody was like, "That's why Vince is so grumpy." He comes back, and he's like, "In the Buster got my seat." But he gets to sit next to Mia. Like you know, he's he, he gets the one up. I guess he doesn't get to look at Mia, but he gets to sit next to Mia. Yeah. Or no, I guess he's sitting next to Letty. Yeah. Hey, let's get some grub, man. Yeah. He says the big car in the beginning of that scene looks like a '70s Lincoln to me. You remember trying to figure out what's on the, what's on the street? He thinks it's a '70s Lincoln. I th- I think I said Lincoln. I think that was one of my guesses. It looked like a Lincoln to me too. Cool. Okay. He says Dom secretly loves Snapple's fun facts. LOL. <laughs> 
He just he's just buying the Snapple. He's like really good at bar trivia. He's like thirteen toucans left on the European continent or something. Like you know, yeah. like just whatever yeah. nonsense Snapple facts he got. We Mia, need to do a whole Mia, line of us. Oh 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 oh. <laughs> we what? need to do a now that we know the Snapple is so core to the DNA of the Fast and Furious. We need to do like a, a fast a Snapple times Snapple X Snapple cross. Too Fast, Too Forever line of obscure trivia with a minute. What do like you mean? We could do like a partnership with Snapple, and oh. like we could do a line of Snapple caps, the fun facts, but they're all obscure things about the Fast and Furious movies from our minute document. So like a partnership synergy, getting our like little weird facts out there to the world. I wanted to do this. So there's a, a Snapple on Snapple.com dash real facts. They have real facts that you can just look at, and I wanted to do a random one and read it on air. What's like Go one that, real fact, 10, 12. The king of hearts is the only king without a mustache. I can see Dom being really excited. <laughs> I'm going to open the door on a uh, very nerdy, although like it's not like I'm not known to be nerdy. What? But back in the day, I used to just collect all of them. Like I would just like, if it was a new number, if it's something I hadn't read, like my mom and I would read, we would like read, a, we'd get a bottle of Snapple. Read it. I just throw it like in a Ziploc bag and just have it in the closet. And then cool. after a while, I was like, "What am I doing? All these caps?" And so I wrote them. I typed them all up. So I have them all. And so now I don't drink Snapples anymore. I just drink the Arnold Palmer. Shout out. Yeah. Arnold Palmer. Shout out Arizona iced tea. But Arizona my mom still tea. drinks like a Snapple every like once or twice a week maybe. So she'll keep the caps and she'll send me like when she comes over, you know, like when I go out of town to like she'll take care of the cat or whatever. She'll like drop off a bag of caps. <laughs> So I have in Excel, let me see here, how many Snapple tops do I have? Well, do you want me to pee in your Wheaties real quick? I mean, they're all online? They're all online. Snapple.com backslash real facts. But this is also, this is more so like, these are the ones that I've gotten. It's not a matter of learning, but like, we have up to number 1470, and I have almost 700 written down. Damn. But so here, here is my, my uh, clarification of your Dom liking fact number 1012 about the mustache, which I did not have on my list. It would have been a much lower number, like, you know, classic number one. Uh, goldfish attention span is three seconds. Like, that's Snapple fact number one. Like, back in 2001, yeah. I don't know when the Snapple facts began, but, like, they were really low numbers for a really long time. Give me, like, one. Do you have, do you have another one between, like, one and 50? Yeah, what number? Pick a number. I think I have the whole, do, I have the, do I have the whole first 50? What's the first number I don't have? Give me, like, 30. What is 30? Fish have eyelids. Yep, they're all online. But what's weird, actually, here's the Oh, here's actually, the they're missing check. 30. There's missing 31, 32. Well, 31, the average human eats eight spiders in his or her lifetime while sleeping. Number 32, there are one million ants for every person in the world. Ooh. What's weird, so though, is that, they're missing like, some online. There are some that are, like, our duplicate. Or, like, for instance, like, number 138, Hawaii is the only U.S. state that grows coffee, is also number 854. Interesting. There's some that I have, like, they're, like, two numbers that are, like... Like, they'll have the same number, but they'll have two different facts. Like, 941, there's one about curly hair, and there's one about South Korea. So it's like, I don't, like, they're, they're just, like, they're, they're wild. They're wild and out over there. Yeah, looking online now, they're, like, they're skipping a couple ones, but they have a large majority of them, I'm guessing. But, yeah, you have a deeper thing. This is the master. I mean, I used to, I was like, but, like, I have, like, a huge, like, I was like, I don't need the actual caps. I don't care about the caps. Yeah, you just want the facts, man. Yeah. Anyway... Uh, Nick says, just watch Bloodshot, haven't listened to the episode yet, but what the hell, I liked it. Cool plot line of Vin Diesel never lets me down in the classic cars. In his other movies, from the 65 Mustang to the beginning to the old 356 Porsche to the early mm -hmm. 80s Ford, he's really kicking it old school. He anyway, is. I'll talk to you on the other, on the flip side. P.S. Just on this one, I was watching the Barbecue Minute. This might be a good present for Rachel, I think, the wife who likes Legos. Anyway, bye. And he sent a picture of the Lego Technic, which we yeah. have talked about. Yeah, yeah I'm going to get Rachel one. Thank you. I am going to get her one. I have a lot of people that were very excited to share that with me. And I was like, I love that my love of Legos and Fast and Furious has converged. And everybody was like, I thought of you. People know you. People know Rachel. People know uh, us and Fast and Furious. Yeah, true. All right. Then our last email also from Nick. I want to follow up after listening. One, it is fun comparing Fast and Furious to any other movie, really. I remember it comparing it to... I mean, we do that again in The Hollywood Nights, which is his episode, so I hope he enjoyed that one, too. Oh, also, we forgot, because we were so distracted oh, yeah. by how much fun the movie was. This is a great time to interject it here. That movie has a fucking awesome soundtrack as well. It has, like, so many great classic songs in it. We totally skimped, skipped over how good the soundtrack was. That was a highlight of the film. So if you guys needed another reason why you should watch Hollywood Nights, right. the soundtrack is definitely one of them. It's a fun movie. We even talked about, like, part of the plot is that 
them going to the radio station for the request. And, like, there's music that we even talked about where we just, like, didn't get to it. But I love, like, in the beginning, they're playing Beach Boys music or whatever. And they're like, oh, yeah. this is Beach Boys time. Which I was saying to you that, like, Sirius XM, the Elvis channel, the Graceland radio or whatever, they have, or Elvis radio, they have, they either call it Graceland time Graceland time or Elvis time, like, just instead of Central time. Yes. So, you know, I, I'm, I, I don't mean to relitigate your UTC argument, but uh, you could have <laughs> Elvis time, you could have Beach Boys time. But, yeah, the soundtrack, the music in, in the movie, in the movie in Hollywood Nights is great. Yeah, Wipeout. Like, I just remember, like, so many times that they would just be, like, standing around and, like, a great song would come through. And I'd be like, this is awesome. Another reason that we are thankful to Nick for recommending that because it's a great soundtrack. Maybe that was. I agree. He says, yes, in Bloodshot, I was one letter away from being assassinated. I'm glad someone else caught it. Makes me feel more like family. Oh. Nick yeah, because you said Nick the name. Barris. Burris. Burris. Yep. We don't, well, we don't want you assassinated, Nick. Well, unless it's by Vin Diesel, in which case maybe you'd like that. I would. <laughs> I mean, if it was me, I'd be like, if 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 I was on TV, because like Vin Diesel just went on a killing spree and assassinated someone, and it was what a me, way I'd, to go. That yeah, I think that's the most serendipitous way to go, right? Like he's like, I fucking hate Too Fast, Too Forever, and just. <laughs> offs one of us he's like he's like oh i was i was thinking that he was like starting with nick like he's just working his way up to us like he's going through all the listeners everybody who like writes in more and just like <laughs> keeping his like way up there like we're like man we haven't heard from like Jerry anybody lately yeah we, then haven't we haven't heard from like nick in a while we haven't heard from justin in a while like now west stops sending us emails like what's going on and then all of a sudden knock at the door and he's outside just bloodshot just waiting <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's like, you killed my wife that still exists. Yeah. <laughs> I just got reprogrammed. It's all your fault. What is it? You were dancing to... Uh, Psycho Killer? Yeah, Psycho I guess if you killer. hear the song Psycho Killer, just like look over your shoulder because like things might be <laughs> about to hit the fan. Oh, that makes it a lot more fun. Nick says, one note I want to clarify, the Ford truck, I guess in the movie, was a F-350. Uh, he says, usually they're, they're more heavy duty. I love it. I used to have an 82 Ford F-150. It was my first truck. Anyway... Mm. Catch you at the end of the race. Just the taillights. Nick, still here, Burris. Well, thanks for writing in, Nick. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the Hollywood Nights episode, because we really enjoyed the movie. Yeah, so as of right now, as we're recording this, the intro to Hollywood Nights is on Patreon, so Nick could have heard that, but it's also not talking about the actual movie. It's just a very long intro about everything else. And then yeah. the full episode is out now as you're listening to this. So cool. Very cool. Let's see here. On the streets, Joe, is there any news? Any Fast and Furious news that we know? Jason sent us news that says... 10 was pushed back a year as well. Well, that makes sense. It makes total sense, right? Like, I can't... We couldn't have imagined it. 9 basically took 10's calendar slot. That, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So, like, it, it made it's not like they were going to release 9 and 10, like, a month after, or, like, in the same month or right. whatever. So, right. it makes sense that they're going to push that back. Similarly, Marvel pushed all their stuff back, but I think they basically just pushed everything back by, like, one slot. Like they, So, like, the way that this all works, and I think I've talked about it on here before, is that, like, all these movie studios plot out the release schedule so that there's not, like, two mass... Like, if they can help it, even, like, competing ones, because they know that they all want to make money, they want to make sure that they don't have, like, two huge movies that have the same target demographic. So, like, mm -hmm. a Fast and Furious movie would never open on the same weekend as, like, an Avengers movie, because, like, mostly it's just, like, yep. dudes 13 to 30 or what. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Yep. Like, everybody sees those movies, but, like... They don't want the core audience to have to choose because then both the studios lose money. So there's this whole like scheduling system. And so sometimes when the movie shifts, another movie will slide in its place, whatever. And so I think what happens like with Fast and Furious is they have weekends set up for releases. And so that's probably why, to Haley's point from earlier, they bumped it back by a full year because there was a prime weekend that they knew that they wanted. They didn't have to like jockey for position especially if this fall if movie theaters reopen this fall could be chaotic like it yeah. could be crazy it might not be depending on how things get pushed but it could be insane and so if you have a weekend that's basically your weekend keep it it makes sense i mean it sucks in terms of waiting but financially for the studio it, it makes like i get why they're doing that yeah they want to keep just giving you one movie every couple weeks yep. that you probably would go see stretch their dollar right and uh, so marvel this week as, or last week as you're hearing this, basically pushed all of their things back, I think maybe one or two slots. So like they had, you know, say they have like a February, a May, an August, and a November for like the next three or four years or whatever, everything just got slid back too. So like it would have been like untitled Spider-Man movie or like untitled yeah. Marvel movie or whatever. But like instead of that, it's now like the Eternals or whatever. And they, so still, like, and they still release one every two or three months or whatever. Yeah. But it's but just it's like everything gets just... slid back. Yep. Yep. That's totally fine. Makes sense. Any other news that you? I mean, anything else of note? I don't think that there has been. No, that was about it. I'm going to look on Google for the Rock president and Dwayne Johnson president for Rock the Vote. 
I do want to say that, you know, we, we joke about like we would have heard, but just this past week, Mark Cuban, I saw was like, I might run for president this year. I'm like, dude, it's April. Like, what are you? <laughs> like, I get that you're a billionaire, but like, look what happened to Bloomberg. Like, if you want to, like, you can't just like, you got to run late. early. Yeah. Oh, We're like boy. halfway through the primaries. Like, granted that they're, you know, fucked because of Corona, but still. Right. I don't think so. A lot of the rock president is just about Trump, and I don't know. I guess there's just the word rock in these things. And then Dwayne Johnson president, nothing else of note. So, no, it does not look like Dwayne Johnson is running for president yet, but still time. I hope he's like a secret, like late October candidate. He comes oh. in like, yeah, I'm running. <laughs> Yeah, so next Tuesday, get out and vote. And by the way, vote for me. <laughs> and just like every commercial we get from like from like Halloween on is just The Rock, just like twenty four seven. Every just commercial. eight days of commercials, just drowning <laughs> in it. Yeah, you never know. You never, you never, never know. It's just like him like punching through walls and boulders, like just like straight through rock. And he's like, "I'm The Rock, and I'm here to like bring the country back." And just like, and I approve through. this message, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, him and Hulk Hogan and like yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Fuck it. Who I cares? mean, fact, aside from the fact that he's a uh, maybe like a known racist or whatever who's had some yeah. high profile uh, issues with the law and stuff, but or not even with the law. Just I mean, like when has that like, stopped anyone? I guess yeah, you know, you're right. <laughs> All right, Joe. The Fast and Furious minute. So here we are into the heart of the episode. Oh, three minutes here. Here's a tricky thing. Before we get into the actual minutes of it all, I don't know what to call some of these minutes. I don't know what the trivia questions are. Like they're important minutes, but they're also like the second and third minutes are kind of it's like one ongoing thing that doesn't have a ton going on but also kind of sets stuff up so it's going to be an interesting three minute stretch it is to talk about anything else you want to say before we play the first audio like anything you want to how you want to prepare for these three minutes no you you when you were talking to me you were like this is a very hector three minutes and it is a very hector three minutes so yeah so number four minute 46 one of two names i either have tomorrow today now or now that's valet parking Right. Now that's ballet parking. <laughs> Harry, what's up, Doc? Hi, excellent, brother. Yeah. Good morning, man. Right. Check it, it's yours. Damn, what it's do we got it's here? It's just more, man. I had some new help, huh? Don't even think about it. Uh, all right, like what's that. Up, Doc, what's how up, you doing? Brian? How you feeling, man? Pretty good. So what's up? What do you need? What's up, man? I'm going to need you to hook me up. Three of everything. I made a list. Why don't you look that over? When do you need this stuff by? Tomorrow, today, now. Right. Come on, man. White boys work fast, don't they? Beto, pasa la feria. Huh? That's right. Hey, you said you need three of all this stuff? Yeah, three of everything. What do you think about that? Check this out. That's hilarious, because this is this is just not valet park. He he drives his he pulls his own car up, so it's definitively I, yeah, not I, valet parking. I guess it's just like oh, primo we'll park parking right out in front or whatever, right? So yeah, you'd be like primo parking or like not valet parking. We are going to get into. <laughs> I was surprised at the extent to which Hector is a part of the community, which we were going to get into in the next minute. Like there's like the, yeah. the building. I did not. I never caught the sign. We'll talk about that in the next minute. But either so in this minute, Hector and his crew roll up to the racer's edge. Hector says hello to Harry, eyes up the new female employee, greets Brian. Hector places his order and flashes a wad of cash. And, uh, Hector and his crew roll at least seven deep. He's got his one guy with him who is basically his money guy. Yeah. Um, and then there's, you know, four or five other cars, each with a guy in there. And this is like, they're a big crew rolling into Harry's. And it's like, we need three of everything and we need it as soon as you possibly can. Yes. There's So here's the, here's the thing about this these few minutes. There's not a lot of the things that I normally track there's a lot of dialogue on this one, which I have written down in the minute document on our yes. Patreon. There's no dialogue in the next two minutes, but this is a lot of you poking around in these shops, in the warehouse, in the auto body shop, whatever. So I'm gonna let you kind of like run this one. Like what? What? As much as I out could. You? I got the first three cars in the line because I could definitely make out what those were. Did a lot of like what's on the counter, what's behind Brian. My favorite part this minute: the computer monitor that he's using. Yep. Is a compact TFT 5000. And also, with Rachel's help, and it was a lot of Rachel's work, I got the whole screen that Brian's looking at. Yes, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, like all the pieces, all the NOS kits that you can buy 
for Honda Civic that Hector wants. Right. And like how many quantities there is, like how many quantity they want, whatever, whatever. But it's all there. So if you ever imagine what was on the computer screen, take a peek and you'll see it. It's beautiful. And uh, there's prices, there's model numbers, there's the descriptions, there's the years or the models, there like what it works with, there's the quantity, there's the price. I mean, there's a lot of information here. I also do want to point out, I said this to you on Facebook before we started, that like we are now officially past the 100 page mark in our Fast and Furious Minute document. And this, oh, yeah. this table helps push it along the way. Like there's, there's so much detail in this document. And I, again, will say once again, I don't know who needs this, why anybody would want this, but it's all here. Yeah, if you'd ever like to have Brian's computer screen for the NOS parts for Hector in text form, I'm taking a wild guess that this is the only place on the internet that has it. Com- completely full. Well, so it looks like right about here, like for one car, it looks like about four grad. And so it looks like if they want three of everything, it's going to be about 12 grad. Well, well, there's different options here. You know what I mean? There's, there's, there's like the stage oh, two kit. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. He, sh- he like just searched like Honda Civic and he's like, these are all the nitrous oxide parts and kits gotcha. that you need for the okay. Honda Civic. But you wouldn't get like the first one and the second one together, right? Okay, that makes sense. I was just, ta- I was sort of tallying up the uh, the numbers without reading what the actual numbers correlated with. Yeah, and then there's like ones for different, like if there's like the one for the turbo or non-turbo, whatever, whatever, whatever. I do want to say, coincidentally, that not for the first time we did it because it was sort of our, our alignment episode, but Nas Boost 2, which we did a couple weeks ago, and this yes. Nas Boost 3, basically Nas does not appear in these movies until we get to an episode where we need to, we're calling it Nas Boost because like they literally walk by a case of Nas and there's Nas signs everywhere. Like it feels like we are timing these right unknowingly, accidentally, where it just shows up. We're like, we need a picture for the website with the Nas and yep. oh, here's the picture with the Nas. In the minute, from the minutes that we're actually talking about too. It's crazy. Amazing. It's just like the weirdest, it's almost like a, it's a coincidence on the level of like, why do these minutes keep starting and ending in great places? We need a, a look at a Nas. We need, like, because the first time I did, I just, like, wanted to get the Cuban Nas that Letty has in, in Fate. But, like, here, like, we, we pass over the Nas that they're mm-hmm. rebuilding in Dom's Garage. We have the Nas here in the Racer's Edge. Mm-hmm. Like, it just, the Fast and Furious provideth. They, it giveth. <laughs> and we taketh. Dear Heavenly Spirit. The other thing that, that again, there's a ton of um, exhaust pieces all throughout Harry's. It's like a large majority of just pieces of exhaust, things, mufflers, yeah, like all that kind of stuff. For the first time, I noticed that there's t-shirts hanging on the ceiling in the background. For sale? Apparently. Okay. I, I mean, it looks like they're for sale, but there's just like nine t-shirts and a, and a track jacket just oh. hanging on the ceiling. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is weird. So I took notes of like everything that I could possibly find and make out on the counter and all around Brian before my head exploded for how much <laughs> dumb shit there is. But I, I got a, I got a lot of it. And the, the computer screen is like top tier. So Yes, for sure. So shout out Rachel for that. Yeah, for the help with that. Hector seems very comfortable with Brian after basically, I mean, they met the one time, right? They, they met when Brian shows up to the race and, you know, they talk about like, you know, I'm Hector, this is my thing, whatever, you're the snowman, whatever, blah, blah right? And then like, yeah. as far as we've seen, it's probably a couple days later, I mean, they know that he probably has gotten word that the Buster saved Dom, brought him back to the fort, all this different stuff. But, like, yeah. I don't think that there's really – that they've had a, a huge opportunity to, like, hang out or be social. And he rolls in here like they're best friends, like, oh, he's going to hook me up. I know this guy, which he kind of does. But it's not like if Dom came in, right? Like, it's Hector – who Brian yeah. only kind of knows about and doesn't really quite know. And also it's weird that, like, why is Hector now coming to buy parts from Harry's? Why wouldn't he have known Brian before the race then if he's so comfortable at Harry's? Right, yes. Yeah, Even it's kind of the point where, like, you know, there's the cute Asian girl at the counter, and he's like, oh, new employee or whatever, and Brian's like, don't even think about it. Like, he's aware yeah. enough of Harry's to know the comings and goings of employees – He knows Brian. I mean, maybe he doesn't care about Brian because Brian's a dude and he's not going to hit on Brian. But it's still, like, it feels like he spends a lot of time there, spends a lot of money there. Like, we know from Harry that when Dom wants a part, everybody buys the part. Mm -hmm. But it feels like Hector is also splashing the pot in a big way, spends a lot of time there, would have known Brian, or maybe maybe just, like, a casual thing. And then, like, he finally, maybe that's why he's so friendly at 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 the race. Because he's seen him around the shop. Yeah, maybe it's like one of these things where like he knew he worked there, but like when he sees him like at the race, he's like, oh, okay, he's one of us. You know what I mean? Right. It's not just like the shop boy. Yeah, I can see that. Do we learn anything new 
about Hector as parts buyer because I don't want to get ahead of ourselves. And maybe we do this at the end. I, I want to do it at the end. I have I have things to say, but we need to get four. We need to get two more minutes through. And right, I'll, because I'll there's to... something we learn about Hector as proprietor in the next minute, and then we learn about something about the license plates in the third minute. Oh, but we'll get to all that you later. You caught it too. Okay. Yes. Okay. But is there anything else about this minute specifically? Because I feel like this is kind of going to be like go over three minutes kind of quickly and then sort of sum them all up in like an ongoing longer discussion, I think. I think so too. So yeah. is there anything else that you think that we should talk t- touch on here that we're not going to come back to probably? Anything specific no. about minute 46? And do you have a preference between those two titles? I would have made it you know white boys work fast. Or I know white boys work fast. We could do a trivia question like how do white boys work? <laughs> fast, slow, hard, <laughs> soft, soft. No. What no, what does Hector notice is new about Harry's? But what about the min- the, the name of the minute? White think- boys work fast, don't they? That's what that's what I said I would have named it. I like today, tomorrow I like tomorrow, today, now. That that one's good too. I like that one a lot. Alright, I'll do Not the I'll valet do- parking. I like the t- today tomorrow, today, now is the best. Okay, so I'll leave that then. That's fine. Yeah. Tomorrow, today, now. Because that's like yeah, such you, remember, you you know that that line you know exactly what minute it is. He's like, when do you need it? Tomorrow, today, now. Do you remember? I'm sure it was everywhere because I think it was a national commercial. Do you remember the Sears commercial from the '90s about the air conditioning? Not unless you help me remember. It's one of those things that like I can't imagine it wasn't everywhere because it was such a big part of my life. But like it might have just been a regional commercial. So on. Here it is, folks. The commercial you've always remembered, but never had proof of. The air conditioning commercial aired by Sears. I cannot live another day without air conditioning. Says tomorrow's gonna be hotter. Hotter? Like yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday you said you'd call Sears. I'll call today. You call now. I'll call now. Now's the time to save on Sears installed central air conditioning. Says I remember that. Like yesterday. You'll call now. Call now. I'll call, I'll call now. now. Yeah, I know exactly what this is. Yeah. Like, this commercial was everywhere for, like, a decade. Yep. And then tomorrow's for- uh, tomorrow, another Scorcher. Cool. Yeah. Like, okay. I must have seen this commercial hundreds of times. I knew it after you. I'll call today. I'll call now. You'll call now. When Hector says tomorrow, today, now, it's kind of like, you'll call now. I'll You're call right. Now. He'll call now. It dev- It definitely reminds me of it now. Cool. Okay, so tomorrow, today, now is the minute. So the question is, uh, what does Hector notice? So what does Hector notice is new about Harry's? We could say new employee. Yeah. Uh, new t-shirts. Yeah. Nas. Systems. Yeah. Or. Cash only sign. <laughs> new signage. Yeah, new signage. So it's the new employee. Yeah. Minute 47. And this is the thing. I'm not sure if we want to make this the trivia question itself. It should be. It should be. So what I wrote down is El Gato Negro, which is the name of the bar slash pool hall, whatever that they're hanging out at. So we'll we'll say minute 47, untitled as of now. So in this, presumably, later that night, Hector and his crew gather outside El Gato Negro, a bar and pool hall. And around the the corner, Brian pulls into a back alley and climbs onto the roof of Hector Automotive, which I never saw the sign. I did not know that Hector has his own body shop. Yeah, we assumed that it was, but we didn't know that the sign said Hector's Automotive. And he, like, never lets on, like, he has a body shop, right? And also, then why is he ordering parts from Harry's? Why doesn't he just order them to his That's own shop? That's my number one question. Like, what are you doing, man? You probably get, like, volume discounts. You have straight access. Like, why are you going through a middleman? Yeah, you don't have a, have a like, a person that you can buy parts from? This is very strange. Like, you don't have a manufacturer. Like, you don't have deals already? Like, I guess maybe it's just, like, possibly Harry has the deals with, like, the performance parts. And Hector's doing, like, normal car things. So he's not, like, dealing with, like, you know, aftermarket parts and stuff, but it's also still weird. It's very weird. I don't know. And that was, so I was more surprised. Like, I was first like, oh, I never noticed that this is, that this is Hector Autobody. But then number two, your question was my first question. Like, why is this the way that things are going? I don't know, man. Very, very strange. And we've gone back and forth a lot, especially in Carolap. Is Brian a good cop? 
is Brian a bad cop? <laughs> Wes is firmly, he's not a bad Good cop. cop. He's Tara's a good like, cop. he's the worst cop. Yes. This, I believe, <laughs> is incontrovertible proof that he is a terrible cop. Because not only in the next minute, he, he's going to get caught by Vince in the next minute, which we're going to talk about. Yeah. But in this minute, he's doing undercover work. He's yes. breaking in, literally punching through a window to sneak into a shop. And yes. he is driving... Of a patron that he just ran into earlier that day. Yes. He is driving a truck that says on the side, the Racer's Edge, which is an easily identifiable truck all across town. Even if you don't know, if you've never seen the truck before, you're like, Racer's Edge, what's this guy doing here? Like, why the fuck... It's the parts truck, yeah. Are you driving a truck that everyone knows is yours? We know from future movies he has access to any car that he wants, basically. Why does he get, like, a burner out of lockup and just, like, oh, here's just, like, some Civic or what? You know, whatever. Yeah, it could, I was thinking it should have been a Civic, too. He should have picked, like, a really stock Civic, and he could have just, like, you know, drove that up. Nobody would have really noticed it on the street. It would have been like, oh, here's another fucking Civic. Doesn't really matter. But no, takes the red racer's edge parts truck to break into hector's thing after he just saw hector earlier that day and if you paid attention in the last minute hector drives by the red racer's edge truck on the street to park in front of the racer's edge so he just saw it earlier that day too so it's not even like the truck was like always behind the building or something and he wouldn't have really have seen it like no he knows exactly what this truck is it's the truck that brian drives to toretto's marketing cafe Mm -hmm. it's the truck that brian drives to pick up the the parts for dom's new 10 second car Mm -hmm. like it's all over the movie everyone knows this car what's going on my man, what are you doing? Oh no, he's just an idiot. Does everyone have their own shop or garage, or is it just like Dom and it's just Hector? I would assume a lot of these guys probably have their own garage. You know, maybe some of them are like legit, some of them are like handymen that like do their work on their friends' cars, but I would imagine that all of them have their own garage somewhere. Okay. At El Gato Negro, the black cat, there are at least 31 people there. I counted 29 <laughs> outside and two visible insides. That's a lot of people. I uh, have not yet, but I will write down a bunch of clothing for those. I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm going to. It is my sworn duty to the Fast and Furious Minute. Good luck. But the only other real notice, the only thing that I really noticed on this minute, I want to know, looking down the street, right, on the right is Elgato Negro, on the yeah. left is Hector's Automotive. Yes. Yeah. Straight ahead, there's like the power plants or whatever that I feel like we've driven by or we've seen in a couple other minutes before. Like, is this, are we in the same part of town, do you think? Did you look into where this is at all or no? No, I didn't. That's very interesting. You mean like North Street, like when they get off the exit, like right where the first heist was, yes. kind of? Yes. Uh, yeah, I feel like it might be, my friend. The coloring, like the green coloring, and like the type of location that it is, feels like Let a place see. that we've been before more than once. I want to be like Control F Hector's. I opened up the movie scene thing, like where the f- filming locations. There's no Elgato. There's no Hector in this thing. So, you know, I was like looking up like what where the markets were and stuff like that. There was a place in El Segundo called El Gato Negro, but it's closed. Because if you Google where is El Gato Negro Fast and Furious, the thing that comes up is 722 East Kensington, which is the Toretto's Market and Diner. What they call the restaurant mm. diner. But that's there not was it. an El Gato Negro. That's like an official sign, though. They didn't make that sign for the movie. Like, right. that thing okay. existed. Oh, actually, because we're never going to have a better time to do this. So I'm looking now, when I Google that, it brings you to Hector's wiki page on the Fast and Furious fandom site, which is, remember, we went through Brian's a couple laps yeah. ago? Yeah. So here's what we have about Hector. It's not very long. Okay. Hector's a street racer and race organizer who appears in the first and seventh movie. He's portrayed by Noel Guglielmi. Guglielmi. Yeah. Hector organizes and attends the original race in which Dom and Brian participate, which is later interrupted by the police. Brian begins investigating Hector and Tran's activities and is convinced that Hector or Tran are behind the hijackings. He believes his suspicions are founded when he discovers an unusual purchase made by Hector at Racer's Edge. Hector later throws a party at El Gato Negro, but his whereabouts after the party are unknown. Mm. And then in Furious 7, after he returns to L.A. with a clean record, Dom takes Letty to Race Wars, hoping to jog her memory. After Letty races and wins, she's crowded by people chanting, which causes her to feel uncomfortable. When Hector grabs her arm, she turns around and punches him. Driving away right after, Dom and Hector share a few words about Letty and how Hector is glad to have him back. Hector is not seen again after this. But then in the trivia, let's just see here. So Hector told Brian that he has his le- that he has a last name, but he cannot pronounce it, which we knew. Yes, yeah, we knew that. Brian got caught breaking into Hector's garage by Dom and Vince, which we're talking about right now. Hector was supposed to have a large role in Furious Seven, being a main character and joining the family. However, the film was rewritten. Ooh, damn! So Paul, I guess, dying cut cut Hector out of the movie more. I want to know what kind of basis they have for that. 
I don't know. Is and it then from Hector's with actor, him? Noel Guglielmi, Guglielmi yeah. appeared in several other films which portrayed a character named Hector, which we knew, of course. But yeah, man, that sucks. Like, that's, uh, you know, poor Hector. Yeah, I guess maybe with, like, all of the Brian death and, like, writing that into the story, Hector got cut out? That would be sad, man. I like Hector as a character. There's nothing keeping him from coming back in 9 or 10, right? Yeah, he always could be. Except that he's kind of like a, a not as good Tej at this point. Like, he has to like level up like 30 levels to like... He, he's the rookie in the campaign. He can't like just come in right now. He has to go like do some side missions and come back. Yeah, 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 exactly. He's not strong enough. He's not powerful enough. What did you notice about this minute? The one thing I noticed is that the Mortal Kombat car is back. That's what I saw. But uh, what else is here? What else do you see at Elgato Negro? Anything of importance? The cool thing that I noticed is behind it, there's a trailer that says Golden Eagle. Mm. And that was the first time I noticed that. It's El Gato Negro, and then the trailer behind it says Golden Eagle. And that was like a fun catch that I had. You see Hector Civic again. There's like a white Accord. I found some of the other cars and trucks that are sitting outside. No, this one wasn't super interesting to me. The El Gato Negro is like the coolest part about it, and I think mm-hmm. that that's really cool. I would like to go hang out there. But other than that, like minute-wise, like there's not a ton. It's the shot of the building, and then the people... And then, like, Brian driving down the alley to getting ready to break in. It's kind of like a transition minute. It's actually kind of like a... In movies, there's, like, an establishing shot where, like, it's the outside of 1327, so you know yeah. the next room. Even if it's a room you haven't seen before, you know where it contains, right? Like, a sitcoms do all the time, whatever. They had to show you here that, like, Hector's across the street right. to give you the, the tension of Brian coming in, breaking into Hector's on the other side of the street, right? Because you're right. imagining that Hector's going to catch him. Exactly. And so this is like the establishing minute, essentially, that like where we're about to go, like where are we? We know Hector, but maybe people don't really know the name the name Hector or whatever, but like we know that he's across the street. We know he's just in the last minute, all this different stuff. He's drinking with his buddies, and then you have to see Brian pull up. You're like, oh, Brian's going to break in. Yes. And what I like about this, what they do cinematically, is they have two different songs playing. Like, they have the Polka's Palabras by Molotov, which is the mm-hmm. song that they're listening to at El Gato Negro, which is, like, that thumping bass line, whatever. Yeah. But then, as Brian arrives, then the song from the score by BT comes on, entering the shop. And what's really cool about the way that they mixed it, I think, is that both songs are playing, but, like, it's separated it tells sort you of, where like, you left are. and right channels. Yeah. And so, as Brian's walking away, you, like, hear the Molotov song in the right channel, and then you hear the BT, like, the score in the left channel. And I think it's very cool that, like, they, you're, they're both so distinct, and you can hear both, but they're also separated so that, like, you're able to differentiate where the music is coming from. Yeah, makes sense. That's very cool. That is something that's really cool, actually. Yeah. I was very impressed by that. Like, I feel like, you know, when I normally listen, when I watch the movies, you know, I'm not I'm not watching movies this closely normally, but I'm also listening in my surround sound. And here, when I was at my computer watching my yeah. computer, and I just have the two channels, I was like, oh, that's very distinctly one versus the other. Yeah, because I like watching this with headphones for that reason, too, to hear how it's tracking and stuff. That's very yeah. cool. Good pickup. I didn't catch it. Um, so what do we want to call this minute? The Golden Eagle? <laughs> no, Hector's Automotive. Okay. Which means that the trivia question is going to be, what is the name of the bar? That Hector's yeah, at, right? and we can call it Hector's Automotive. Or, uh, where does Hector throw a party? I don't know if he's, like, throwing a party. Like, where is Hector partying? Yeah, I guess I guess I'm using that word because that was from the Fast and Furious wiki, but, like, we don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. So where is Hector partying? Hector's Automotive. We could we could say the Racer's Edge. The Racer's Edge, say yeah. El Gato Negro. And we could say Golden Negro. Or the Black Hat. Let's, instead of the Racer's Edge. So we'll do El Gato Negro, Golden Eagle. Hector's Automotive, The Black Cat. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. That's a good question, too. Anything else about this minute before we go to the third and final minute and then sort of sum up Hector in general? This one is a van- very transitionary minute, though. I'm glad that it, I'm glad that this wasn't a single minute that we did. It yeah. kind of needs to be bookended by these other two to give it really any real meaning. Yeah. Once again, the, the minute looking out for us, the minute provides. <laughs> <laughs> True. So the third and final minute for this episode, minute 48, a minute that I called Entering the Shop, because that's the name of the song, the name of the song, the name of the track, the score by BT is called Entering the Shop.
in this minute, Brian punches through a window, explores the garage. He leaves, climbs down the ladder, and then Vince hits him in the back of the head with a shotgun, points it at him. End of minute. Perfect. Yeah, it's a good minute. This is a really good one. So the only thing that I have here, notably, before we talk about the bigger picture, is that Vince's fears are confirmed or his suspicions are deepened. Because, like, all movie long, he's been like, he's a cop, Dom, he's a cop. And Dom's like, no, he's not a cop, the buster saved me, blah, blah, blah. But here it's like, look, I caught, I literally caught him running around red-handed. I knew that something was off about him. Yeah, yeah, he, just, like, he was just waiting for a reason to confirm that he's a cop. Yes. And this pretty much does it. Yep. Although Brian is going to, and the, we'll get to it in the next minute or two or whatever, like, Brian awkwardly talks his way out of it, which we're still trying to figure out, like, if, if that's because Dom needs an alibi or whatever, which we'll get to. Yeah. Like, your, your theory, but, like, yeah, this is kind of like, oh, good job, Buster, you got caught. Like, not only did you drive there like an idiot, but also <laughs> Vince caught you. Like, you're, he you're caught so bad you. at red-handed. everything. Yeah. yeah, he got him, like, dead in the act, dead to rights. Like, he got him. One of the cool first things I found about this one is I found out that Vince hits Brian with a Mossberg 590 Mariner 12-gauge shotgun. That's very okay. cool. Thank you, Internet Movie Firearm Database. The coolest part about that, a little fast connection, is it's the same shotgun Dom pulls out later at the end of the movie in front when, oh. I think, so when, like, Brian pulls up to the 1327, like, way later, and Dom walks out with a shotgun, it's the, it's the same shotgun, which makes sense. Very cool. Okay, so, yeah, so that's just, like, a family shotgun. Yeah, it's, it's the family's shotgun. Yeah, cool. exactly. Okay, so like on the family crest, not the Toretto crest, but the family crest, like the this family, like you know how there's like the intersection, yeah. like one's got to be a shotgun and one's got to be the wrench. Exactly. Like, this is how we protect our family. A hundred percent. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Exactly. So let's get to the real meat and bones here. And meat this and is why I'm so glad that we have written down every number and letter that we've seen because they kind of swap license plates, but... The license plates on these Civics are not the license plates that jacked the truck in the opening scene. Okay, and, and so I, d I dug a little bit deeper, right? Okay. We know that it's not the license plates that are on the ones that jacked the truck in the beginning. They could have swapped license plates, right? right? The other thing we see is that there's a red Civic and a silver Civic. They were all black. So maybe they got new ones. Okay. Even then, the most important thing, did you catch the most important telling part about this? Is it the Pirelli tires? Yes. Because Bilkin says that all the tire marks left at the scene were Mashimoto oh, ZX yes, yes, yes. tires. Previous mm. trivia question. Yes, yes, yes. Were Mashimoto tires, not Pirelli tires. So when Brian sees the Pirelli tires, he knows that it can't be Hector, or at least not these Civics, right? If these were the same cars, it would mean new plates, new tires, new colors, paint job. It feels like a lot of work. Yeah, it would be wildly, like, they just bought new ones. And the Pirelli tires that he got on them look new, right? So it's like, they look like they changed them, but why wouldn't they have used the ones that they had on the last cars? It's just a lot of stuff happening here. Which lent, leads us to believe that Hector was buying parts for three Honda Civics, but they were not the same Honda Civics. And also Hector's in possession of these three Honda Civics. My theory that Hector was buying parts for Dom is pretty much squashed. I do like that in the future Fast Connections part, you said it solves the Hector dilemma, which I put in quotation marks. Is like, if we're writing a series of detective novels, like the Hector dilemma is definitely one of them. Yeah, the Hector dilemma. The Hector yeah, dilemma. It sums it up. There's, there's underlying evidence here that like Hector is not involved. So now Brian sees the Pirelli tires. He's like probably wasn't Hector. There's a very good chance that none of this adds up. It's just coincidental stuff. And now he gets hit in the back of the head with a shotgun. So yeah, it was sad to see. Even Brian didn't even know the license plates. He knew that they were all black Honda Civics. He sees one black Honda Civic, different license plate, different tires. Probably not it. But like that theory gave us like four to six months of discussion topics like it was you know what i mean like it was now we have to think back and like re readjust and recorrect when we go back through this right like so now who is buying dom's parts how would they not have known dom was buying them does he buy direct from harry isn't harry working with the police wouldn't he have known that it was dom our same question from hector about hector in the last minute doesn't hector have a direct line like can't dom just buy parts from whoever directly also true but why is Hector to, buying he, parts from Harry's? That's the new Hector Dilemma. The Hector Dilemma 2, why are you bad at business? <laughs> Elect Hector Dilemma 2, Electric Boogaloo? Yeah, exactly. It's definitely weird. That summed up that minute, though, and that was like, 
But we're going to have to keep following this and seeing what's going on here. Because this doesn't make it. It still does. It, it, it answered a few questions, opened up a few more. Yeah, how the fuck is Hector not buying his parts himself? Like from somewhere else? I think that doesn't the questions make any that sense. it opens are more easily explained by just like, oh, that's just lazy script writing. Yeah. Like, it's not the same thing where we're like, well, why are they not telling us this? Are they trying to misdirect us here? Red herring. That's what it is, right? But here, also, it's and, like... And we get like confirmation here that it's not Hector. And they keep like kind of hinting that it could be Hector. To be fair, we're, we're halfway through the movie, right? Like we're at the point where like something has to go. So this is basically the theory that the movie has been spitting that Brian's trying, like, I, I feel like in his heart, Brian knows it's Dom. Like he's always known it's Dom, right? It was always Toretto, Brian. He's been, he's been peddling that it's not Dom, it's Hector just because he wants it to be, he wants that to be real. And I think that, you know, halfway into this movie, we're now minute 48 of like 106, 107. And like yeah. seven of those are credits. So like we're basically 48 out of 100. Like we're halfway through anything further. It's like, why are we dragging this along? Like now we have to get into the meat of it. Like, oh, is no. it Tran now? And exactly. then he has to go chase Tran and then prove essentially that it is Dom. For this minute, trivia question. I was wondering, and I don't know if this is, this is probably too easy, but based what? on our conversation, wondering if what similarity do Hector's cars have to the cars that jack the truck? And we could say the same tires, they're the same colors, they have the same license plates, or they're the same make and model. No, I want like a, I want like an inverse of that question. In what way? Like, how would you do it? Yeah, it's, I guess it's the same question. We have so many things that, like, where it's not, right? Like, it's not this, yes. it's not this, it's not this. The only similarity that we know is that they're both Honda Civics. But, like, the Honda Civic is, like, incredibly common. Like, maybe not tuned to this degree, but it's not like it's a very specific import car. It's like, oh, this is an easily customizable car that everybody probably has some version of. Yeah. I mean, if you have a better question, I'm I'm happy to... No, I like it. I was going to say, like, which one of these is not a reason... It's the, it is the same question. Right. I mean, we, we could reword it, but, like, what, what similarity, what trait do Hector's... What is the only shared trait between... No, but that's, like, too... It's the, then it's too easy, right? Because they're just Civics. We don't have to say Honda Civic. We can just say the same make and model. Like, I want to keep it a little bit... Plus, also, like, they don't need to be all insanely difficult questions. I also don't True. know what other question we could possibly ask in this minute, because, like... Yeah, it's that. It's a slow minute. Like, the last two... Like, in terms of narrative, like, this is important in terms of the overall thing, but, like, in terms of what's happening by minute, it feels like this minute and the last one kind of make up what's been happening in any other minute recently, right? Like, there's so much yeah. that happens, and here it's just, like, sort of like the rise and the fall, and then we're going to get the, the following action after this. Yeah, exactly. Anything else that we need want to say about these three minutes or about the Hector dilemma, other than, like, the, the question that we have now is, why are you not buying parts direct? But, like, is there anything else that we want to say about these minutes? Why, that, and, and where is Dom getting his parts from? Because, like, how would Harry not have known, or Brian not have known, that Dom got parts for three Honda Civics? You know what I mean? Mm hmm So, yeah. So next week, two movies. Yes. Two movies? On Tuesday. Yes. Our next episode, Fast Five. Fast Five. The Brazilian Job. The Brazilian job, yeah. Then, not to be confused with waxing. On Friday, one week from today, we have a movie that's not exactly about cars, but like we included a link to this in our March Madness bracket, and I was like, I really want to watch this movie again. Mm -hmm. And like, there it is about cars, but it's not mm -hmm. about cars. But it's a movie that you and I both love. What We're is going it? to watch? My cousin Vinny. Oh, such a good movie. Which is not really about cars, but to the same point where like Hollywood Nights is not really about cars, but it is to the point where like. Bullet's not really about cars, but it is. Like, yeah. Also, it's just a movie that we love, that I want to watch again, that we can talk about, that I think that if you're out there and listening to this and you have not seen it, watch it. because it is I, But I can't imagine you haven't. It's a classic movie. Maybe the younger kids, maybe like maybe our fan Hector hasn't seen My Cousin Vinny yet. Academy like... Award winner from this movie, oh. Mona Lisa Vito, as portrayed by Marissa Tomei. Aunt May, hot Aunt May. Hey, man, I'm, I have to keep it really toned down. Because everybody knows my feelings on Marissa Tomei, and Rachel does not enjoy them. Any other thoughts here before we talk about... I mean, this is a great upcoming week of Fast Five and My Cousin Vinny. Like, there's not much... You can't, you can't ask for more than that. No, I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. I have some other ideas I want to talk to you about, too. From so. Brazil to stuck in the mud in Alabama. Oh, any real gr man knows his grits aren't instant. Any self-respecting Southerner doesn't yeah. use instant grits. True. But for all things Too Fast Too Forever, you go to cageclub.me, facebook.com slash Too Fast Too Forever, or at 
to Fast 2 Forever on Twitter and Instagram. Email us, family, at cageclub.me. Check out our Patreon page at TooFast2Forever.com. Kick us a few bucks. Mm-hmm. Get access to the Fast and Furious Minute document. Now we broke off a new hundo into the second hundred pages. This is going oh, to be a 200-page document when it's all said At and least. done. At least. At least. Boy, oh boy, get access to the Fast and Furious Minute quiz. Just see get what's on Brian's access. computer if you want to see that. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of words. Man, oh man. It is. It's insane. But go to TooFastToForever.com for that. Like I said, email us, family at cageclub.me. Come back on Tuesday for Fast 5. Come back next Friday for my cousin Vinny. Leave us a review on the iTunes, please, and thank you. And that's all I got. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I'm Joe, too. And we'll see you next time right here on Too Fast, Too Forever. Peace out. Out. Peace.